Good morning. Um, let's see. We got a new subscriber yesterday. Yay. Um, if you are interested in participating in our New Testament mini challenge, the information is in the description below. Um, I'll send you a free PDF um, of the notebook or journal that we're working in. Um, if you don't want to, don't worry. All good. We're just happy that you're here. Okay. Today is Friday. Oh, hallelujah. I say that every Friday now, but today is Friday and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. John chapter 14, verse 10. Jesus lived and moved and had his being in the Spirit of God. For God giveth him not the Spirit by measure, for he dwelleth in him, even the fullness. While the New Testament affirms that the Son was subordinate to his Father in mortality, the Father and the Son enjoyed much more than closeness. There was a divine indwelling relationship because he kept the law of God. Jesus was in the Father and the Father was in him. In like manner, we are under commission to strive to be one with God to Paul at in like manner, we are under commission to strive to be one with God, to have, as Paul wrote, the mind of Christ. We gain the mind of Christ as Christ gained the mind of the Father, through the power of the Spirit. I think if I had the mind of Christ, work wouldn't exhaust me so much. Okay, so... Today is Acts chapter 26, and in this chapter, Paul gets to plead his case before Agrippa. Um, Agrippa says, Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself, and then Paul goes on to tell his, his, his story, what he was like before his vision and how he had the vision, and what he was like after the vision, and why he is being accused of these people. And um, the, the scripture that I chose for my personal statement is verse 19. It says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. And I just wrote... I will not be disobedient to the heavenly knowledge I have received. So that's the one I chose for today. Um, and then as he's saying these things and, and preaching or testifying, giving account of his deeds, Festus stands up and says, uh, he says, um, Paul, Thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. Which I think is so funny. Because there's the argument for both sides, right? You get too much learning or you think you have so much learning and you think you know everything and you know better and you you just kind of go off the rails a little bit. And then there's the case for the other side where you don't have knowledge so you don't know what you're talking about and you have these like weird f factoids that aren't facts that you just base your entire mindset on and I just I think it's funny that both cases are true and there's an argument for both sides but um Paul says um, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. And then, uh, he says, and I know that Agrippa knows these things. Um, 
I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophet? I know that thou believest. Sorry, I didn't know that my volume was not down. Um, and then Agrippa and the people, they take counsel together, and Agrippa says to Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. So he's saying, you should have let him go, and therefore he had to appeal to Caesar, and now he's got to be, like, you know, taken further. But it's, he's like, there's nothing wrong with this guy. What's the matter with you? So that's where we leave off in 27. I mean, in chapter 26. Let's switch over to our verse by verse and see what they have to say about this. We've only got three things for today. So even though we are reading a whole chapter each and every day, the supplemental is very thin. Um, but that's okay. Because, I mean, we're learning. We're learning on our own. We're, we're finding things to... We're finding things to... To seek out to explain those chapters a little bit better. Okay. For verses 1 through 29, Paul's conversation, conversion story is related to Herod Agrippa II. Heard... I can't read this morning, apparently. Read our modern prophet's parallel situation in Joseph Smith history, chapter 1, verse 24. For verses 28 through 29, Elder Neil A. Maxwell noted that Agrippa's remark was not a flippant one. He was seriously touched. Um, and that's from Take Up the Cross, page 255. The Revised Standard Version of the Bible renders this passage as follows. In a short time, you think to make me a Christian. Uh, and Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. For verses 31 through 32, the verdict is not guilty. It is the Lord. It is the Lord's will that Paul bear testimony in still another court, that of Caesar in Rome. So we... Uh, we keep going. We got to keep going. We, one court or another. And we just we keep going. He keeps going. Paul keeps going. To have that determination and that faith, I don't know if at this moment, if I was arrested and taken to court, if I could stand strong at the next one. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. I think I would be frustrated and tired. But he keeps going. <clears throat> okay. I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is Friday the 4th. <sighs> and this one is Household of King Henry the Eighth. O Almighty God, who has prepared everlasting life to all those that be thy faithful servants, grant unto us sure hope of the life everlasting, that we, being in this world, may have some foretaste thereof in our hearts, not by our deserving, but by the merits of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Right. That was where are we? That was Acts chapter 26 and tomorrow we do 27. <sighs> we will see you then. Have a great day. It is Friday. It is Friday. All right. Love you all. Bye.